Hi guys, welcome to Larkshire. In today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to go from store-bought fake fur like this, to this. So I started out with about two yards of fabric from Hobby Lobby, and uh, this fur was about $18 a yard, and I had a coupon for it, so um, it wasn't too expensive. Next, I'm going to just cut off the excess, and instead of using scissors, I'm gonna make a small incision and tear it. That way, uh, you prevent cutting the individual hairs, and you get a nice, clean edge. Next, I used a marker to trace out a basic shape of a pelt. I used the following picture as a guide, but it's really up to you on how you want to do this. Don't worry about getting this perfect, since pelts already aren't usually a perfect shape and they have irregularities. After I completed this project looking back, I probably would have made the tail bigger here since it ended up turning out a bit small, so that's really just up to you. So once I'm done tracing the outline, I'm going to cut it out and I'm not going to use scissors like I mentioned before because it leaves that jagged edge and it also um, leaves a lot of hair that comes out of the fur that's a pain to clean up. So I'm going to instead use a straight edge X-Acto knife. and. You're going to carefully drag along uh, the fabric and that way you can separate it carefully without cutting any of the hair underneath. Now I'm going to take that knife and just drag it along the outline of my stencil and cut the whole piece out. You want to be careful not to scratch whatever's underneath your fabric, whether that's the floor or a table, so just be conscious of that as you're making your cuts. Once the cutting is all done, then I'm going to slowly separate it out and make sure that the whole piece comes out intact. After cutting out the shape, I decided that I wanted the snout to be a bit more narrow, so I went ahead and just trimmed up the edges. To add some color to the pelt, I decided to use some dark brown antiquing gel. I use this gel for a lot of different projects, including weathering leather armor, and I found it to be super helpful. I added a little bit of water just to thin it out. The nice thing about this antiquing gel is that it's stained, so it's staining the fur, rather than paint, which could change the texture of the fur. I looked at a lot of different pelts online and saw that uh, many of them have a dark stripe down the back, so I started out with that and then worked on blending it in on the rest of the pelt.
I made it darker in a few different spots, such as the shoulders, just to give it more dimension. I also made two dark spots where the eyes would be on the head. For the next step, you're going to need a heat gun. You should be able to find one on Amazon for between $15 and $20, or at most craft stores or hardware stores. For this, I really wanted to change the texture of the pelt in various areas, such as the snout and on the legs. The heat gun did a great job of melting the fur some and curling the ends of the hair to give it that different texture from the rest of the pelt. I probably suggest not doing this on top of a piece of cardboard, as that may not be the safest practice. Um, it also created a little bit of a smell, so I'd probably do it in a ventilated space, uh, maybe a garage or outdoors. For the next step, I wanted to change the texture of the hair in a few places, so I got a large container of inexpensive, unscented hair gel. Dogs tend to have more oil along their back and on their haunches, so those are good places to add the hair gel. And um, any other areas that you want to change the direction of the fur, I did that on um, the upper shoulders and as well as the back legs. I really like how the hair gel helps to change the texture of the hair in various areas and it makes it a lot more realistic. Here I'm just adding more to the upper shoulders to help change the direction of that fur. For this next part, I went to the fabric store and I got a yard of tan colored faux suede to put on the back of the pelt to make it more realistic. I didn't film this part, but I basically just laid the pelt on top of the suede and traced it out and then cut it out and then laid it on top. Sewing fur can be a huge pain, so I decided to attach it with some fabric tape as well as some fabric glue. I believe the tape was called Stitch Witchery and the fabric glue is Fabri-Tac. This was also a lengthy process, but um, I went ahead and added some of the tape in each location as well as some of the glue and folded it down and pressed it on.
while this did take some time, it ended up turning out really well, and I was surprised at how well it stuck together. After I was done with this process, I did end up going back and adding more glue to the edges in a few different places, but overall it ended up sticking really well. At this point I wasn't positive what I wanted to do with the tail yet, so I didn't glue that on yet. So here I folded the sides of the face in and glued that down and used something heavy to uh, stick on top of it to give the face a little bit more structure and also make it a little bit more narrow. I wanted to make my faux suede look a little bit more realistic, so I took the brush with the antiquing gel and applied it in a few different areas just to give it some uh, variation in color. For the tail, I went ahead and glued on the faux suede a few inches up from the base, and then I took my X-Acto knife and cut along the sides about an inch and a half in. That way I could roll the tail into a tube. I didn't really need the excess fabric, so I went ahead and cut that off. Next, I took a uh, piece of fabric uh, the length of the tail and used some hot glue to glue that on. Next I folded the fabric in and added some glue to the other side of the tail. Then folded both sides in and pressed it down. And there you have it, that's the last step. I think that the main thing that makes faux fur look fake is the fact that it's all one pattern and it's consistent uh, throughout. So by adding the uh, stain to the fur and by using the hair gel to change the texture and also changing the texture with the heat gun on the various places, that really helps to make it look irregular and have variation throughout the pelt. When you're finished, is this going to look like a perfect recreation of a wolf pelt? Well, probably not, but I think it's a huge step up from the faux fur that comes off the rack at the store, and the whole project cost me about $50, whereas our local Renaissance Festival has some wolf pelts that are well over $300. So that's a pretty big difference, and whether you're on a budget or you're just looking for a fun project to do, I really think you should try this out.